Hey everyone, this is LEGO's 1989 Batwing. Large display collectible model. I think the most important thing for me to do in this entire video actually is right here and right now. To take this off of its stand, to bring this right next to me so you can see without any worry of any camera lens distortion or, or anything, what this is all about. It's about that size. It's about that visual hit right there, that impact to your eyes and to your brain and that shape. It's huge and it's striking. The set also does come with three good minifigures with a good ledge display. We'll look at those later on, but of course, keep in mind that the Batwing itself is not intended to be in any way, shape or form minifig compatible. You can throw like 10 minifigures into the cockpit area if you want. It's just not going to make any sense. Uh, before I get into the details though of the Batwing itself, of which there aren't that many, honestly, let me show you the stand. That's kind of important. Yes, I said the stand is kind of important. That is unusual for me. I usually care very little about stuff like that. It's just kind of a, a little accessory. But with a model this large, it's very important that the stand be able to hold the thing. So you notice that the plaque, the UCS style plaque, is on the back side right now. It's because technically I have the Batwing attached backwards. It's intended to be usable that way so that you could see the top of it. You know, it was leaning towards you initially, but that's technically uh, the back side of the stand. The stand here is built in light gray compared to the usual black, and that's to be in contrast to the all black Batwing. It actually makes sense. It does have enough strength, but it does get a little bit wobbly in there. That's just the flex of the parts. You don't have to worry about things falling apart. It's put together well, but it is what it is. With the Batwing on the correct way, if you will, this is what it looks like if you're roughly at its own level. So, you know, if it's facing towards you, you see a bit of the underside, which doesn't look terrible, but it definitely doesn't look great. You know, it's not a, it's not a good display presentation that way. So when you do that, you're pretty much going to want to have this on a very low perch or on a, a low cabinet top or something where it's below, well below waist level to be able to appreciate the thing itself. However, there is one other option for display that is critical. On the underside along the center line, there are two openings. This one right here, this two by two opening is where the stand, the regular stand, uh, is able to go in there a little bit. And then it has a couple of, of points that do not attach with any studs. It just slides together and sits there and holds it in place pretty securely. You know, it, it works well there. But forward of the center of gravity. So this is very near the center of gravity or center of mass of, of the build. But forward of that is this specialized Technic uh, picture frame mounting piece. It's literally designed to work as a picture frame holder. You'll see that used for like the art sets and stuff like that. That isn't that is designed to be attached to a wall. And this here is designed to be attached to a wall as well. Uh, you want to have a nice secure mount. You don't want to just stick a nail into a, a piece of drywall and think it's going to work. You need to do it right. But this does allow you to have a single mounting point to put this on a wall, which is going to be the most practical way for most people to store and display this giant thing. As you can see, most of the underside is flat, although this is kind of at one level here. And then there's another level where you have touch points here and then all along the, the center. So when you put this up against a wall, it goes flat against all this and, and then also gets to hit these to make sure that it doesn't rock from side to side. There are also a couple of small uh, fins that you can bend down if you have this on its regular stand instead. So it would look a little bit better. Sorry, I forgot to put those down while well, I had it on the stand, but you know, these do fold away conveniently if you're going to put it on a wall. With that said, I'm going to spend most of the rest of the time of this video having this on its stand because it's most convenient to show it off to all of you that way. This is a very solid build, <laughs> shockingly solid much, much more so than I expected. It's very thin. The, the, the wing itself does not have a lot of thickness to it. It has, of course, a Technic, uh, Technic brick-based skeleton underneath to make sure that everything holds together very well over the, the wide span here. But also to my surprise, the, the large box-shaped open Technic bricks that do form most of that skeleton are filled in then filled in with regular bricks. So this is not hollow at all. There are very, very few hollow spaces throughout the wing. There's a little bit of texturing that comes into the, the outside. Uh, the outer, outer shapes are done pretty well. As a matter of fact, if you look at this 
from directly above and compare it to a picture or a diagram of, of the, the real movie props. This is a very, very close replica, so there, there was definitely a lot of respect given to the source material here to a pretty extreme degree, I would say. I think that the designer should be very, very proud of their work in that sense. Um, it would be well deserved, but the build process wasn't wasn't that fun for me. I really liked adding the edges here. The way that the edges fit on is great. Um, the way that some of these wedge plates lock into place or just perfectly fit into place at the end is, satisfi is satisfying. The way that these this edge trim gets added on with the use of some rubber bands even in there is uh, is different, but it's legit. You know, it's proper Lego building techniques. I, I didn't have a problem with it. It's just it's just different. You can raise and lower these uh, uh, differential uh, air brakes. This is what they are. They're, they're they're air brakes, so you can stand them all the way up. Uh, cannons on the sides over here. Missile launchers up here, and well, that's about it. Uh, fortunately, these upper fins kind of they're not locked into place but they stop uh, where where they go so you can get those to the exact same angle from side to side this little mini fin on the other hand has a little bit of range to move back and forth nothing too serious around the back here there's some nice little tiering that you can see with a whole series of wedge plates uh, with actually different spacing and different sizes that looks pretty nice but all in all there's not a whole lot to see here. It's mostly massive size and the the construction techniques that are required to well to make Lego pieces hold themselves together across such large spans and with so much weight. Again, this being a solid build, even though it's not thick, being as solid as it is, it's very heavy, very extremely heavy. Uh, the canopy, of course, comes off. I'll just pull all that off. It's not even attached to anything. It's really just sat in there. I think this is the first time we've gotten this canopy piece here. That's a, a partial uh, cone in the trans dark brown or what we call trans black. And then these here are also in trans dark brown or what we call trans black. Uh, nice, but did come with scuffs already, which is just standard fare these days. And I'm not okay with that. I'm not happy with that, especially for a nice big collector's model, something that many people will want to invest in and hold on to for quite some time. You know, you get it from the factory and it already has these issues, even though they did separate out these large transparent pieces in their own bag. You know, they weren't just mixed in with everything else. Still, they scuffed themselves up. The inside of the cockpit is where you see the highest concentration of detail in the entire build. And build wise, much of that is dedicated just to the seat, which is able to recline. Uh, but I mean, you pretty much just want to leave it right where it is. Unfortunately, most of the small detail is done in, in the form of stickers. So long sticker here, small sticker for a couple little panels and a couple stickers for the sides. Those are important details and all, but uh, for something of this size to have so little fine building is just unusual to me. I don't think there's anything particularly bad about what I see here. I like the, the HOTAS controls here, H-O-T-A-S, hand on throttle and, and stick. Those are built up uh, just just fine. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, these both are able to go forward and back, but not side to side over here. That, that's okay. More stickers to be seen looking forward from the pilot's perspective, as is to be expected, but I don't like seeing all of these exposed uh, open studs down here. That's part of the actual frame. Those are part of the, the, the main skeleton bits, the, the Technic bricks that form all the interior you know, structure of this that holds all together. So those just could have been covered with just I don't know, two tiles. I, I feel like it, maybe there's supposed to be some detail under there. Maybe it's supposed to be like diamond plate, but I just don't like the look of it. It just doesn't look finished to me. And that is something that you can see through the completely uh, transparent cockpit. Now behind the seat, there's one additional detail. Let me get this to focus back here. Uh, so there's one more sticker right there and this actually opens up. It's like a, it's like a trunk <laughs> and it has a couple of, of uh, crowbars in there, which is not what you would expect. Uh, a Batman to have, you know, in, in, in a toolbox. However, those crowbars are intended to be human tools. They're for us to pull up 
the, the, the tile that forms the base of the cockpit seat down there. Behind that is where you'll find the backside of the picture frame mounting piece. So when you're mounting this to a wall, you want to pull this up so that you can see right through there and get it lined up properly and then you can put it back. So that's the entire intent there. It's just a nice thing that, that helps for folks who are gonna use a good built-in mounting option. The minifig stand is that familiar Gotham uh, rooftop edge design with a couple of gargoyles there. This presents well and it's very appropriate for the source material. I, I like these little things, although making the gargoyles themselves is a little bit annoying. It's they're, they're just finicky pieces, especially attaching those horns in there, which are soft pieces into the binocular parts at different angles and then getting the binocular to stay there. It, it, it's not something that you want to touch a lot, but the end result is worth it. Here's that Michael Keaton Batman with the single piece cowl and cape that realistically prevents him from turning his head. <laughs> so many times uh, when a minifigure doesn't have expected articulation, people complain. But in this case, it's like, no, it has to be that way. Because did you know that Michael Keaton actually couldn't turn his head in those movies because of the design of the cowl and everything? Yeah. Cool. So it's a it's a feature, not a bug. It does look cool though. It it looks proper. This is done right. I don't I don't think there's any other way that this could have been done that would have been nearly as good. This is all fairly stiff and there's a little bit of flex to it, but you know it's not intended to flow. But the flow that is implied, you know, of air going through it and the weight that's implied here, it's really good. This was done fantastically well. The part designer for that did a really, really good job. And then, you know, got that print on the front, which is done well there. And I take all that off since it is just one piece. This is what we have underneath. Unfortunately, the head, uh, the, the headband is not printed all that well, the, the white, but thankfully it doesn't matter that much because you're just seeing something other than detail showing through the, the eye holes and it's fine although I, I will always point that out because it's part of a a systemic problem that lego has of not printing things well and here's the alternate which works pretty well the print on the back of the torso is is fine you know the graphic design work there is fine maybe could have been uh, a little bit more uh, depthful <laughs> it could have shown a little bit more depth if they also brought in some of the dark uh dark gray rather than just the light gray there, I think. Jack Nicholson Joker here looks fantastic. Again, the print qualities could have been better to be sure, especially on those legs in this case. I feel like the legs are printed not even as well as the torso. The torso could have had more opacity to the white to be sure, but still the minifigure looks really cool to me. I like it. There's no dual molding or anything there. It's just printed on the, the fronts of the legs, no prints on the sides of anything but the design work is really good it looks fantastic to me it doesn't need anything special on the back of course you're not going to get an alternate face with the the head fully exposed all around but this is a properly collectible figure yeah really good design i, I do wish that the print quality had been higher though and finally this is lawrence joker's boombox goon with really good print for the shades there the printing on the torso is okay feels a little bit smudged to me like the the stamp moved just ever so slightly but the design work is pretty good and the the dice uh, the small detail for the dice is is nice and that's that's done well but the face on this one is printed pretty perfectly there's print on the arm just this arm not the other one but again the design work there is nice but the production quality could have and should have been better it's not crisp you know, this was moving too much in, in the jig when the, the transfer occurred, the ink transfer, paint transfer occurred, and it just smudged the edges a little bit. Around the back, there's not much to see there. I think that's pretty appropriate, though. See, there's a little bit of detail up above in the dark area, which is, is good and nice. Overall, again, another nice design of figure, just held back by production issues. The head, though, is great. These are the leftover pieces, and I almost feel like I should have shown this up front early in the video when I was starting to talk about how there really isn't a whole lot of fine detail in the main build, because this proves that, you know, for a set with this many pieces, a set that's this huge, to have that few small pieces represented in the whole thing is, is very telling in that sense. And then the sticker sheet 
you know, the, the stickers are mostly just for the cockpit area, except for the big not UCS plaque piece. So this set costs $200 US and comes with over 2,300 pieces. And as you just saw, there are very few small pieces, at least very few one by ones and such. So you look at the price to part ratio, it's actually very good for what you're getting here relative to Lego's norm, especially for today. I feel like the total mass of stuff that I get here is pretty good by Lego's current standards for that price. But to understand that, to really feel that, to, to grasp that, I think you have to pick this up. Yeah, I think you have to feel its weight in your hands. You have to feel its sturdiness in your hands. Forget about the stand. It, it, it does its job. It does its job just fine. But the fact that there are no or almost no hollow spaces in this is, is really, it's really shocking. Although it is, again, rather thin. It's just, it's... It's mostly a structural and aesthetic thing, which when you think about it, all, especially collector display models that are brick built construction models are just that, right? It's about structure and aesthetics, but there's something about this one that is different in that sense. I guess really it is because of how few details it's, it's about structure and overall macro level aesthetics more than the little details. That's, that's, really the thing for me that is just unusual to me. I'm, I'm used to seeing more fine details, even for the larger scale, like Star Wars uh, stuff. I can appreciate different shaping. This just didn't need all the, the layering and different curves and stuff coming together. The fanciest stuff was just how the, the edge of each wing was done. And that was done very well. Uh, and then that's that. <laughs> the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Uh, didn't impress me that much in how it went together. Honestly, didn't need to. I feel like this is a success. I think that the designer did an excellent job with this and the, the fact that it, that it is as sturdy as it is to where it can be hung from a single screw, from a single bolt, a single uh, you know, mount, single point mount uh, from a wall is really smart. Uh, a, a gift, uh, definitely people would have tried to figure out ways to make that happen one way or another with hooks underneath the, the in, inner sections of the wings here or something maybe close in, but then you'd need something from the top as well. So having that built in is really good because honestly, not a lot of people have the space to display all this. It's a lot and it doesn't display all that well, honestly, on display like this. <laughs> Uh, on, on, on the stand. And this is the best way to display it. Just, you don't want to have a flyer looking down like that. You want to have it looking up. And when it's looking up, you're not seeing anything good until you turn it around again. So I do like this from your side. Now from the back, you're seeing something, not a whole lot, but I want to look at it from like a front quarter angle or something. And when you look at it from that front quarter angle, what are you seeing? you're at about the same eye level as I am right now. And you're seeing a little bit of underside, which doesn't look terrible again, but it doesn't look great. So this has display issues because of its size, because of the form factor and the designer offered up an excellent solution to that. So I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's a very successful set. I think it's well done. I think the value is pretty good figures. Production value could have been better, but design is good can't really complain. I expected more from it detail wise, but as it turns out, it doesn't need it. There you go. Let me know what you think though. Share your thoughts in the comments down below if you'd like to. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.